so far we saw addition, subtraction, multiplication. In this video, we are going to be talking about power of whole numbers. If we write 2 and a little the 4 on top of the 2 right there, we read it as 4th power of 2 or 2 to the power 4. The 2 is called the base and the 4 is the exponent or the power. To solve 2 to the 4th power, we multiply 2 by itself 4 times. So the base is 2 and the exponent is 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. These 2 we multiply by itself 4 times. And the answer should give us 16. You can check it. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So 3 to the 5th power is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes. And the answer should give me 243. So it is very important to note that if I say 3 to the 5th power, it doesn't mean it's very different from 3 times 5. Some people do that error and that's very wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. 3 to the 5th power is 3 times itself 5 times. So if you can find a way of memorizing some basic multiplications, it will help you go fast in some operations. Something very important about powers. Any number x, yes, if I call number x, any whole number x to the power 0 is 1. So if I say x to the power 0, that should give me 1. x being any whole number. So if I say 3 to the power 0, I have 1. If I say 15 to the power 0, I still have 1. If I say 1000 to the power 0, I still have 1. Right? So. Another thing to know is that 0 to the power 0 is undefined, at least for now. We will try talk about it. Also, 0 to, a, to any number, 0 to any number, I mean the exponent here can be anything, 1 or 2 or 3, whatever you give, that should give you 0. So if I have 0 to the power 8, that should give me 0. If I have 0 to the power 1000, that should give me 0. Let's talk about squares and cubes. In fact, second power is called square. So second power, square and square. And uh, third power is called cube. They have special name to facilitate usage. So 4 square is equal to 4 times 4 is equal to 16. 4 cube is equal to 4 times 4 times 4 is equal to 64. Do this by yourself. 10 cube, 1 cube, 11 square, 6 square. We can now move to square roots. 3 square is 9. So 3 is the square root of 9. And we write it as square root of 9 equal to 3. Another example, square root of 16 is equal to 4 because 4 multiply itself gives 16. The 16 is right there and only one 4 is represented there. It is very important to know that every square root of a whole numbers has two roots. Root here is answer and we have one being positive and the second be negative. So if I say square root of 16, I should have two answers, one being minus 4 and the second being positive 4. The positive results are called principal square roots and the whole number whose square root is also a whole number is called perfect square. Finally, when a whole number lies in between two perfect square, it is square root must lie between the two corresponding square roots. What do I mean by that? Square root of 9 is equal to 3. 
square root of 16 equal to 4. So the square root of any number in between 9 to 16 in between them should give us a result lying in between 3 and 4. So the square root of any number in between two perfect square gives a result that lie in between the result of these square roots. So if we ask between what consecutive numbers does square root of 6 lies, we have to ask ourselves two questions. What is the perfect square before 6? And the answer is 4. What is the perfect square after 6? And the answer is 9. So square root of 6, the result should be in between square root of 4 and square root of 9. And square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3. So 2 is less than square root of 6 is less than 3. We should stop here for now. Uh, we will continue with another topic in the next video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, share, comment, like, uh, click the bell and, uh, and see you in the next video.